Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Leela Webdev. Today I am excited to talk about the Gradle build system in the Android Studio. So if you are new to the Android development, so this is one of the super important stuff to, to understand about this Gradle thing. But don't worry, so I will tell you in a simple way. So let's try to see about this one. So fine. <clears throat> before diving in so open your android studio the project which we have created our my android project first android project so open that project and let's be ready so now here in this one so here if you close this app and here so it will be like this and here you will be able to see the gradle files in the left side here right so get the Gradle files here so there are two keys ones of this level the build.gradle for the project okay so this is for the entire project and the build.gradle.tts for the module so that is nothing but my android project now before look insert these files let me click quickly explain what this gradle is so normally the gradle is nothing but it's a build system that automates the whole process of building the android apps so this build this gradle makes the testing building debugging and also releasing your app way easier so plus also it simplifies adding of the plugins and also the new libraries to your project in the Android Studio. So that means entirely the application settings and all those things will be taken care by the Gradle. And the build system. So you are building your app and all those things will be taken care by the Gradle. So this is one of the things. So now let's try to talk about the first one. That is nothing but here the first file. The build.gradle.kts. So what does it do? This is a Gradle script file in your Android project root directory. So this will be available in the Android project root directory. You will be able to see here top level build file where you can add configuration options common to all the sub projects or the modules. So here we are having only one module. So nothing but an app module. So you tomorrow you can add different types of modules. So this is the project level root level uh, to it will all apply to all the modules. So that is the main thing. So it holds the configuration settings that apply to all the sub projects and also are the modules. So whatever the name you want to call it as you can call it. So what does it do for it defines common configuration for all the modules. It specifies plugins to use across the whole project. It lets you centrally manage the dependency versions also. You can also add the custom gradle tasks also here. So which we will try to do it in our future videos. It also includes the repository definitions. So for example, here we have mentioned it. In our project, right now we are using plugin aliases to manage the dependencies in a more in a more organized way. So here we are trying to use apply false. So this apply false statement makes sure the plugins are not automatically applied to the root project. Instead, they can be used in the module level build file so here these will not be automatically applied to the project uh, project level a standard project level build or gradle usually file looks like this so now here let's try to open this one so this is the project level and here you will be able to see the plugin declarations which you uh, which the modules which are sorry plugins which are necessary for this one and also here you will be able to see the repository definitions like Google and Maven Central. Okay, so now that is the main thing. And what you will be able to see here. So project wide dependency versions, custom gradle trust, project wide configuration settings. So that is the thing. Okay, so now here you will be able to see the project. Now, this file plays a big role in managing the modular architecture of the Android project. Android Studio generates it automatically whenever you create a new project. So we will not stress too much into it, but we will learn how to use it as we go throughout this course. But right now, let's check out the other file. So sorry, here, this is the settings file which I was trying to tell you. So this is the file settings file. Okay, so let's go to the build.gradle.ts file. Okay, so now this is the most important one for us right now. It's all about your application and its features. Here you configure the Android application settings. So let's examine this file step by step. 
So starting with the first section, the plugin section, it applies the required plugins for the Android development. So this is this it applies the required plugin for the Android development. Next, there is an Android block. So here you'll be able to see there is an Android block. <coughs> so now this is the core configuration block for the Android specific settings in your module level build or graded file. So it will be usually in the app module. Okay, so this one, this usually will be in the app module. It is where you define all the necessary or essential parameters that decide how your Android app normally gets built. So you can see some values already here. Let's go through them one by one so that you can have a clear understanding about these things. Already you may be having a clear understanding by seeing those properties. Let's but still we'll try to see one by one. Okay. First is the namespace. So you'll be able to see the namespace. This defines the unique package identifier for your app. And the next one is the compile SDK version. This specifies which version Okay, this specifies which Android SDK version to compile against. It determines which API level features you can use it. For example, if it is set to 30 means, then you won't then you won't be able to use your API 31 features or higher. So, but if you set it higher, your app can access more advanced features. So, always try to make it as high as possible. The, then there is a default config scope. You'll be able to see here this contains fundamental app properties the first one is the application id this is a unique identifier for your app on devices and the google play store so by using this name the google play store can able to determine your app for this project you'll be able to see com.leelawebdev.first android project so when you upload to google play it will be known by this id second is the minimum sdk version so this is the minimum Android version that your app supports. It decides which API levels and above will work in your app. Now it is set to 26. So that means the app won't run on 23, 24, something like that or lower. The next one is the target SDK version. This is the Android version your app is optimized for. It shows that your app works best at this level. And the next one is so what what you need to understand is set the minimum sdk as low as possible here okay this is a quick tip to reach more devices set the compile sdk and also the target sdk as high as possible for the latest feature so not normally ideally we need to make the compile sdk and target sdk the same value okay it should be the both should have the same value so fine now notice this line where the target SDK is uh, so here you'll be able to see so if you try to make it as a 34 or something like that so normally you'll be able to see a warning here so if you hover here so this is not targeting the latest version of the Android compatibility modes so now here toggle info you will be able to see so there is thing okay so that means here we are not targeting the latest version of the Android so that is one thing it is trying to say so the latest version of the Android so here you'll be able to see more actions so here launch android update resistant so here so we can sorry here you can able to target the version so right now i am using the 36 version and whenever you click on this one okay so now you need to click on this sorry one second so whenever you are updating this one so for example let's say that i am decreasing this one means so now here it, it is saying that it doesn't have it, it is telling if you hover here you will be able to see the notification that it is not targeting so now consider testing and updating this version so here it is telling you that you are not targeting the latest version so right now at this time of this recording so that is nothing but 36 so whenever you update this one okay so update this one so you will be able to see a sync now will be applied so when you change here it will not be applied to the changes to the project so you need to make sure that you need to click on the sync now so this even usually takes around 10, 5, 10 to 15 seconds depending on your system so that that target sdk will be applied automatically to your system so now here let's go so now you understood about this one right so now your target sdk is up to date and all those things so right now here we are getting warning that's nothing leave it if i try to close it and open maybe it will work i think so it will go away okay so fine so now 
anyway let's going uh let's keep going so next this one is the version code okay so this version code you need to understand so you will be using this whenever you are publishing in the google play it must be an integer something like one two three four and so on after you publish if you update your app and upload a new version you must increase this number otherwise google play won't accept it so the version name here so you will be able to see the version name is what the users going to see when you when they are updating their app in your phone on their phone sorry it's not super important for google play but users will notice it you can use formats like 1.0 1.0.1 .1 and keep going up when updating give it a new version name for your fans downloading it okay remember okay so remember whenever you're changing something in the google gradle so you need to update the sync now so that is the thing you know right click it and everything updates to the new values so before we wrap wrap this up let's talk about dependencies so here this section in the gradle, uh, gradle is for adding the libraries if you want to add a new library to your project this is where you need to do it android studio and gradle makes it really easier and way uh, so way easier than before android studio came along to add a library we need to you need to put the code in the dependencies section so here you need to put the code and we need to click on the sync now everything for that library gets added automatically so we use the implementation keyword and also the library code here so goes into the parentheses so here in the brackets it will go before we add codes directly but now android uses this version catalog structure to keep things more organized notice how the expression starts with lips or something like that so here you'll be able to see the lips okay so here so this here you will be containing all the dependencies and all the things which you are able to see the things right here so android core got is app compact those all the versions and all those things here you'll be able to see it so now here you will be able to see the perfect thing okay this dependency section in the builder gradle mod references this file libraries dot repression dot two ml files okay so now here in this library it will contain full details including version numbers and everything will be there in this section so i will show you the examples and all those things in this one so we will try to see so let's move on to the another file the settings.gradle file so here this is the settings.gradle file so now this file is critical for the gradle build system to understand your project structure it does a few key few key things this specifies which modules to be included in the project and so here you'll be able to see it which modules should be included in the project and next what it will write is establish the hierarchical relationship between the modules defines the repositories to use at the project level and it also may contain the settings for the plugin management this this plug plugin management what it will try to do it is okay this plugin management what it will try to do is it uh, the block here specifies where gradle plugins will be downloaded from it says to use google's maven central repository okay here you'll be able to see the maven central repository this is the default one for android plugins and the central maven repository for popular libraries the dependency resolution management here you'll be able to see block defines the sources from which project dependencies will be resolved so here the project dependencies where it will be run. all right so now you have a enough understanding about the gradle for this video so we have covered the basics about this without missing a uh, anything so we will try to see the next thing that is nothing but manifest file and all the things so we'll try to see about this one manifest file okay in the next video so i hope you understood about this case thanks for watching and see you in your next video before that, if you like this, hit the like button, subscribe and drop a comment below. So that's it guys about this one. See you in the next video.